Hey guys, um, so it's Sunday, November 29th, 2020 at 4 16 p.m. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Rylan and I identify as gender fluid and I go by he, him, or they, them pronouns. Um, and I am a mental health advocate. So this video has been really important for me to make, which Again, I think I said in another video that I just haven't gotten around to it, but here I am, it's Sunday, we're talking, let's talk. What I wanna talk about is stigmatizing uh, language that we use in everyday life that is um, like stigmatizing against mental illness. So some examples that I'm thinking of, and these are just words that we use colloquially, colloquially? I don't know how to say that word, you know what I'm saying. So the word insane oh my god that's so insane um crazy that's another one some people take issue with that but more specifically using specific diagnoses of mental illness to describe um states of emotion so um saying that someone is i don't I really hate the the weather is bipolar that really bothers me because that's a very serious mood disorder um, saying that someone is schizo for no reason because they're acting in a way that you don't want them to. Also, a really big one is saying, oh my gosh, I'm so OCD. I love everything neat. I'm a perfectionist. Or describing someone else as that because they like things to be organized and they're not slob kebabs like me. And a really annoying one also is oh that person must have split personalities or that person has multiple personalities when describing someone who again um maybe feels feeling strongly and is you know a bit moody but the biggest thing that i am going to focus on once i circle back to that is the use of the word triggered but i'm going to circle back first when it comes to describing someone as having ocd or even saying your about yourself I am so OCD, I need all of my pens in order, I have all of my clothes color-coded, you know, whatever, cookies like really nicely shaped in a jar like Khloe Kardashian does. That There's a difference between liking things neat and clean and maybe even being neurotic about that, you know, like classically Monica on Friends is a very good example of showing someone who is extremely neurotic, but there's a very fine, line or rather thick line quite honestly between being neurotic liking things a certain way and that falling into being a disorder because OCD stands for obsessive compulsive disorder this is a disorder that affects every single area of your life and not commonly known to people as OCD does not look like just tidiness there are a lot of different forms that OCD can take there are things called intrusive thoughts where some of us think of very unpleasant thoughts, maybe about hurting someone or hurting ourselves, or um, you know, personally something that I struggle with with my intrusive thoughts associated with OCD is just having a random word pop up into my head and it will repeat over and over and over and over again throughout the duration of a day, um, or maybe for a couple hours. Another time, another, I guess, presentation of obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, yeah, well, I guess, I guess that's it, right? Intrusive thoughts, contamination fears, that's another thing, um, also known as like being a germaphobe. So it's not just liking things that are clean. When something gets classified as a disorder and is actually put in the DSM, which is a Diagnostic Statistical Manual, that means that for it to be classified as a disorder in any way, it means that it is adversely affecting your quality of life. Whether that's interpersonally holding and getting a job, all of that stuff. It means that it is severely impacting your ability to function, therefore it falls into a disorder. Liking things to be organized is not the same as something that is absolutely debilitating to your life. Okay, the next thing is something that I, I feel like a lot of people say is is describing something as bipolar, especially the weather. I feel like that's what I hear the most is maybe it was really cold yesterday and now it's super hot. And I just hear people say, oh my God, the weather is so bipolar lately. It was like 50 degrees yesterday. Now it's 100. 
again, bipolar disorder is a very severe mood disorder that also is not just characterized by manic, which is the high moods, but most people just call it high moods or being excitable and depression. Bipolar is so much more than that. There are a lot of symptoms that fall into that. And being manic isn't just being really like erratic and having hyper hyperactivity energy. When someone is perhaps going through a manic episode, they might have psychosis, they might have delusions. This person might have the delusion that they are, you know, the next coming of Christ. Or I've heard some people think that, you know, they've had delusions that they're like the Queen of England. And another negative thing that comes along with a manic episode might be excessive spending, promiscuity, engaging in risky behaviors. So for someone to demean those very intense experiences to relating it to weather or someone who, um, you know, is moody is extremely invalidating of someone's experience that has that disorder. And then the whole, that person has split personalities or they have multiple personalities. Again, this is used to describe someone that, you know, maybe some people think is just an asshole. You know, I, I remember someone um, like at my old job described my boss as that. They were like, oh, well, maybe he has split personalities. Well, we're going to do a real quick psychology class right here. First of all, that's not an actual diagnosis and neither is multiple personalities. What that is now diagnosed and called is dissociative identity disorder or DID. And that is a whole lot more complex than again, just having two sides of you. And even using the whole world, world, the whole word multiple personalities does not do justice to what DID actually entails. Maybe someday I'll make a video about that, but that is so much more complex than someone you know, acting like a five-year-old and, and then having like a, you know, I don't know, a grandpa personality. It's so much more complex than that. But the biggest thing that really pisses me off and is used way too often is the word triggered. I feel like people can use that in honestly any sentence. And again, I really see this on social media a lot. Um, like if you see something that you don't like, like maybe, I don't know. I think I've seen it when someone was talking about like a celebrity's outfit. Like I don't, maybe Katy Perry was wearing like a bright purple dress and a green hat. And I remember seeing someone like, I'm so triggered by this comment or um, seeing something that you relate to online, like a meme or something. And you're like, I feel triggered by this. I feel attacked. When it comes to actual triggers that have to do with like PTSD, anxiety, all of those things, that's not something to be taken lightly. When a trigger actually happens in a person that's struggling with a mental health condition, that too is extremely debilitating and should not be whittled down to simply expressing something that just makes you uncomfortable. You wanna say something that makes you uncomfortable? Call it cringy, call it sus, I don't care, but don't call it a trigger. Because when a trigger happens to someone, that's because we are responding to something something that is a threat. It could be a flashback to a previous traumatic event. It could be, it could be something happening again that happened. I have a couple friends that unfortunately have been um, in abusive situations more than once and they get triggered when they're put in a situation that somewhat mimics what happened to them in the past. Even smells, even locations can trigger people to be reminded of something horrible that happened to them. Perhaps someone was in a car accident and when they're riding in a car and they get to an intersection, they might actually be triggered to remember a horrific car accident that they were in. So again, using these words and just throwing them away to describe emotions is it's just very insensitive and maybe some people watch this video and think that I'm being sensitive or, you know, I'm a snowflake and I'm getting offended by everything. But everything I'm talking about, these are very serious things that affect human beings that struggle with mental health. And I don't care if it comes off as me being uptight or prissy. They shouldn't be made light of. Like, it, it really shouldn't. These are things that affect people. So... I finally just wanted to make a video and talk about that because I really wish it would fucking stop.
and honestly, like you just, you sound dumb. So think of a better word. The sources are great and there's even apps on your phone to find better words to express how you feel instead of using a mental illness.